I am so thrilled to have Laura Harrington here for my virtual hallway conversation today. And I was just saying to Laura, the whole point of this is to act like we just bumped into each other in the hallway. The only thing that's going to be different is I know Laura, but I'm going to ask Laura, Laura, I'm asking you to introduce yourself so we can pretend that we don't know each other, even though we do know each other, but everybody else right. needs to know who you are too. So over to you, please introduce yourself and your role on campus and anything else you want to tell us to get us rolling. Sounds great. No, hi, it's nice to be here. If we were really doing this in person, I'd be giving you like the biggest hug right now. I know. And I would, yeah. I would cry. Yeah. So, there. Yeah. so <laughs> let's pretend we had a hug and a couple of tears and then, <laughs> and then I'll introduce myself. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> So I'm Laura, I'm the Assistant Vice President in the Faculty of Health Sciences, which means I'm responsible for a, a bunch of the administration in the faculty um, in terms of like HR and finance and IT. I work with people on the major gifts and stewardship we have in the faculty. We have corporate services space, um, you know, capital projects, all of that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a role with an extraordinary team that I'm very lucky to work with. And it's a ton of fun, it's super challenging, um, but a great place to be. That's great. Wow. And uh, so I would say you're Laura Harrington, ADP, a big job. Uh, <laughs> faculty of Health Sciences is so big. And I think for some people, well, for people who are not part of the Faculty of Health Sciences, it's a bit of a mystery sometimes to think what all goes on behind those amazing doors into uh, FHS. One of the things that I love about the role that you have is it touches in a microcosm of FHS, a large microcosm, it touches on all things uh that everybody within the faculty works on i mean so you're kind of a would you call yourself a go-to person for people in the faculty of health sciences laura yeah i think it's a starting point for lots of things i mean we're very lucky to have some extraordinary leaders in each of these portfolios so really it's just about helping people navigate to where they need to be and we often bring those leaders together to put our heads together on some problem solving i think one of the other things people puzzle about sometimes is about faculty of health sciences is that we sort of are over here on our own. We have our own this, we have our own that, we have our own HR, for example. Why is that? Why do you guys have to have your own? And I think, you know, the way I would say it to people is that we have traditional university work that happens with academic work, research, all of that. And then we have this extra piece, which is the clinical work. Yeah. And so many of our faculty are clinicians and we have these really important, strong relationships with our hospital partners and community uh, groups and doing clinical work across, you know, the province in many, many places. And so I think we have this added layer that doesn't really happen anywhere else on campus. And it requires us to have some specialized knowledge to make sure that everything is done appropriately within the ministry guidelines, all of that kind of stuff. So it's, it makes sense for us to leave some of those things here because we're closer to where the work is happening and we can really provide the best level of support. But I think that's a question sometimes people have. We really do work in collaboration with our partners across campus, um, but we just have that extra piece that requires, I think, some focused special attention. Yeah, that's a great explanation. And I agree. I think that's a, a, some good myth busting going on as to why. Uh, and it is really important. I mean, I, you know, this is going to sound very flip and it's not intended to be in any way at all. But, you know, when a lot of us think about the work that we do, we think, hey, you know, it's not life or death. But, you know, when you were supporting hospitals and working closely with them on clinicians and, and the type of medical work that people in your, like that issue is there. I mean, the, the whole COVID mm -hmm reality has been a real eye-opener, I think, for a lot of people on campus as we listen to Dr. O'Byrne talk in, in leadership discussions about what's going on within the hospitals. But for all of you, you have a very different vantage point on what it means to be in the middle of a pandemic and all of the complexity that that brings. So, you know, I, I'm thinking for you, when you look at this year and the future and you look back at this, do you, like, what have you learned about the Faculty of Health Sciences, even though you're part of it, you're deeply in it, is there something there that really makes you go, wow, yeah, that's that's FHS? You know, that's an interesting question. I think I would say it in a few ways. If I think about it with the administrative lens, I would say I knew this, but I think I've seen it demonstrated differently, which is the remarkable commitment people have to the success of the faculty and the way people have been so resilient and have dug deep to make sure we can do the work of the faculty, whatever that happens to be, clinical research, education, whatever. Um, and that's at all levels of the faculty. Um, and I think it's been amazing to see that extraordinary commitment. When I think about the people we work with, I mean, you might be 
having a Zoom call and then they put on their white coat and go and see patients. That hasn't stopped. That kind of work hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. They also come into the meetings with um, evidence-based information about what's really going on. And so to be able to listen and hear all of those things and use them to inform the work we're doing and the planning we're doing, to have that close connection and be able to hear it firsthand has really, I think, helped us be better prepared, um, better informed about what's going on, um, closer to the action in a way. Um, and I think, you know, the other thing I'll note about the faculty, and I know, I know that many of these things exist in other places on campus. It's just, this is, this is where I live. So this is my experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the ability of our researchers and clinicians to pivot and say, here's an opportunity. I can do this. And um, the extraordinary results that they get and the impact it has on human beings, like right away is really something to be very proud of. Um, which is something I think that's really special about the faculty is you, you walk the halls with these individuals who literally are saving lives through their work on a daily basis. It's really a privilege to be here. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, I mean, you can tell the admiration in your voice, being able to interact with people like that and to know that you're able to support them, because that's really a lot of what we do, you in your way, me and mine, uh, very different um, type of work, but at the end of the day, very similar in that it's about the support and the enabling of others to do the work that they need to do that's critical to the mission of the institution. Um, and it is really wonderful to work for people that you really admire and respect and think, holy crap, you know, I mean, I think that about you, though, because I think about what you do in your role in FHS, and I just think, oh my gosh, like, I don't, you show up at every meeting, you're so well-spoken, and you're so thoughtful in how you approach things, and you're a really good question asker. Uh, I love that you ask really good questions, because I'm like, yeah, that's a really good question. I, that's a good one, Laura, you know, I often am thinking that in the background, <laughs> for sure. And we have had a, a great opportunity over the last year. It's kind of interesting because we've known and been in meetings together, but boy, this is a really great example of how you can build relationship in a virtual environment. Because you and I have really spent a lot more time together while we're sitting yeah. at our own homes, although you're on campus and actually you're the last person that I've seen on campus, uh, which wasn't that long ago. I, it wasn't, that, that was, was fun. <laughs> when was that? That was in the was that in the spring or the fall? I think I we were wearing our coats. I feel like it was a long time ago, but I yeah, know. that was yeah. fun. Yeah, it was fun. We met in the middle of campus around the flags and had a chance to do a socially distant outdoor yeah. visit with each other, which was pretty exciting. And like you said, if we bumped into each other, we probably would have given each other a huge hug. Uh, like if we had that uh, agency, I guess, in this time to, to feel like that was appropriate. But yeah, so I mean, I think it's it's fascinating the work you do. We have a lot of interactions around IT because, of course, your your team, your IT team, CSU, the amazing people in your um, computer services unit support and work with you. And I work closely with them as well because of our shared interests um, and support. And so, I mean, ha what have you learned about technology this year, Laura? I guess that's where I want to go with this question. Like, what, what do you think has been your fascinating aha on the technology side? That's a tough one. Um, hmm. First of all, back to your previous comment, I agree with you. It's been a, an interesting year to build relationships. And I would say one of the things I really admire about you is the energy, the positive energy even that you bring to a room into every conversation. And I really admire that about you. I feel like you lift people up and that's, that's a leadership skill that not everyone has. So I, I try to learn from you on that piece. On the technology side, I certainly, I, I do not have uh, a great comfort with technology. I think some of us have had to learn how to just um, do some problem solving, but like I'm talking tiny things. I think what I've learned is more about the breadth of impact, how much we need, the not just need the technology, we need like strategic, thoughtful partners to help us find solutions to technology issues or respond to opportunities that lead us into the future? How do we be at the leading edge of these things? I think having that strategic partner, that strategic person representing the IT lens at the table for these conversations is critically important. And I think that's something I've learned during the pandemic in that we can't talk about technology that we need or ideas that we have without having that person at the table mm -hmm. contributing to that dialogue about what's possible, what could be possible. 
what challenges do we need to think about? I think that would probably be the biggest lesson because I'm not sure that I've learned anything about the actual technology <laughs> so much as how much strategic value it brings, right? Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's a wonderful answer. And I think you're right. And it is great to have, uh, you know, within your team, you have some really bright and brilliant people who are so dedicated. I mean, that's the thing that always amazes me. Uh, and it shouldn't amaze me because, you know, I've been at McMaster now for almost four years and it's constantly shown to me how dedicated and driven people are to try and support and help and do. And the IT community writ large is just all that, you know, people who just want to do what's right for the institution, Absolutely. And get things move, you know, the, the, the the goal is about what I can do to help, you know, yes. name the constituency, like how I can help with them. But it is fascinating. I mean, I think you, you and everybody, including myself, learned a lot about technology this year, what works well, what doesn't. I mean, we, I, as you know, and I've, you've heard me say this in a few meetings, I have problems with technology as well. And I know people feel good. Like, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm helping people to feel better about themselves because when I get my <laughs> video to work or my microphone's not functioning, people are like, thank God, you know, she has problems. And, you know, it is an interesting thing when you move into leadership because you move away from some of the more hands-on technical stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I have to get involved in. And I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. Is there something in particular? I mean, you've just talked about all this amazing medical stuff, but I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, has there been any particular area, you know, whether it's HR or IT or admin stuff or, you know, space planning, because I have to think that's got to be eating up a, an awful lot of your time as well. All of those things, like, what is it that you think, gosh, if I put on a different hat, I would have been amazing in this area, but I wish I never had to talk or think about that thing. Is there anything that you'd be willing to share on that front? <laughs> I'm not sure that there's anything I would put aside. I think I'm still learning and growing for sure in all of these portfolios. And I do think, as I mentioned, I mean, we have some extraordinary leaders and I learn from them every day. Um, and I'm grateful actually, because they never say, well, actually you should know that, or that's a silly question. They sometimes they answer it more than once. So I think the patience of our leadership team is, is really helpful. When I think about some of the fun things that we do, and I know, you know, we have um, a team here thinking about space, right. And the capital projects, spaces like dominoes and puzzle pieces and, um, Mm, causes a, a lot of worry because it takes a lot of time to move the puzzle pieces and make them fit in. Yeah. And we have a strong team who thinks about that as well. Um, I think if we had more time to play with that, I think we could probably be more strategic if we could step back and say, how do we look at this big picture? And, um, but it's not easy to move people. Yeah. Um, and often we want to be able to respond to opportunities, but, but space is a challenge. And so I think it's an area where we have a really a lot of strength. Um, could have more fun probably if we had more time and a and a bit of ability to kind of go into outer space and look down a little bit more, um, and play right yeah. and just have a bit more of that that time to think and be yeah. more. Yeah, I think that would probably be the one. I love the idea, and I think it's a critical piece that sometimes gets overlooked to having fun at work. Uh, you know, we have interactions with people we've talked about bumping into people and how much joy we can get out of that. But just, yeah, being able to feel like you can play a little bit and experiment. I think that's why innovation is an area that always fascinates people. Like, how do we get to innovate? Because it sounds like this, you know, adventure into the unknown and how we can come up with answers. And unfortunately, we spend an awful lot of time on practical problems that just they don't give you the latitude to take that innovation and have the kind of fun that you might want to have. Um, I know for a fact that you have two beautiful children who are at home with you sometimes being taught. And so, you know, in, when I think of fun, of course, we often think about kids, but they see you working hard all the time. So is there something that you're trying to do within your home environment with your kids at home? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what that's been like for you having mm -hmm. balance of family in addition to a really demanding uh, job. And, and how are you trying to bake some fun into all of that for yourself and for them? Yeah, that's a good question. And not an easy one. So I have two boys, 12 and 15. And um, they, they're, they're wonderful boys. They're very self-motivated. They care a lot about the quality of their schoolwork, they they enjoy playing sports, you know, all of those kinds of things that are sort of normal kind of teenager activities. I think the resilience they've demonstrated over the last year in terms of, um, like I have one start grade nine, right? So starting grade nine, that's a big deal. 
Um, so didn't get to have the grade eight grad experience, starting grade nine, trying to make friends in a new environment, being at home, being back at school, then being home again. And there was this, right, this transition back and forth. And my other son was in grade six last year. So I think I was really impressed with their resilience, their ability to say, okay, this is the way it is. I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to ask for help when I need it, but otherwise I'm going to do a good job with what's in front of me. And I think they, they really did. They really did a good job. I think they are very proud of the year and we're very proud of them and how they did it. Um, I'm also very grateful to have a, a husband at home who, you know, I work in the dining room. He works downstairs below my feet in the basement. And, and we sometimes yell up and down at each other or text each other silly things or, you know, to try and bring that fun into the day. It's amazing how much we text each other. It's not a very big house, um, but we text each other within the house a lot to check in on each other. That's how do we bring fun into things? I think it's those little things, sending a silly text, sending a joke, um, trying to get out together. We, we, for the first time ever decided to join this tennis club. And um, it's been, I am not a tennis player. Um, so much fun to play with the kids and with my husband and just get out and do something different um, is what we were looking for in the spring and summer. Yeah, so I think those are the kinds of things we've been looking for is just opportunities to shake it up because I think we've been stuck inside at our desks for so long. And that's what we're looking for over the summer too. It's just yeah. more time to do something different, have a little bit of fun, Try not to embarrass them too much, you know, because they're at that age. <laughs> it's not cool to hang out with with their mom, but I like to do silly things with them and and um, try to just yeah mix it up a little bit. But they're they're great kids, and we're very lucky that they've done so well. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're right. The reward now is to really just not have to think too hard about things. So so tennis is interesting. I mean, is that something that you guys have <laughs> played in the past or is this like all is it really new new or it's like oh I played when I was a kid but I haven't played in 10 years and now I'm going to do it again like what how did you get on uh, tennis? Interesting we, I mean we live near a, a local tennis club which helps right and it, it, you know it's so but the kids had gone to camp so they have some a little bit of skill I would say and they're young and fit um, I have not played tennis since I was on the street with them as like little kids or as a kid myself on the street. So that's been the fun adventure. My husband is one of those people who can just pick up a whatever and play a sport. So that's, so it's been fun because I've played with all of them. They've all learned that they need to tone it down when they play with me. <laughs> and in fact, my 15 year old actually said to me, mom, would you like me to just hit it towards you? Uh, <laughs> because you know, so I think it's been fun for them to play with with me in a different way. Um, but certainly no no skill in the family. But I think just the opportunity to have actually, to be honest, some scheduled time like Saturday at noon, we're going to go play tennis. And it's something we walk down together. It's just a really fun thing to do together. But we don't even keep score. Like, it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. it's just running around and having Good fun. For yeah. you. I love that people are trying new things like that is really cool. Uh, a lot of fun. And it's and it is great to be able to do that with your family, of course, which is really cool. So, so were you one of those people who through the pandemic, I mean, did you bake bread? Did you, I don't know, like what else pick up a craft or do any painting or like none of those, I haven't done any of those things really. I mean, I have no. some bread, but I've baked the, I, I baked the bread that is like, what's the shortest path to adding yeast <laughs> and ending up with bread? And there is a lot of like surprising, a lot of recipes out there. You can try and like take it from something to the end product in a really condensed amount of time. If you find, I wouldn't say it's the best bread, you know, let's be clear. Yeah. yeah. Bread is tough. I love to bake actually. I don't do it very often, but I do love to bake. And ah. um, yeah, so I always like to try new things, but they have to be, like you say, pretty simple. Like for example, I'm telling too many personal things about oh, myself on the package of chocolate chips. There's usually a recipe for some kind of cookie or something. Those are the easiest recipes and they're so kid friendly that we, we do that together. Sometimes that kind of stuff, we've definitely okay. picked up a bit in the, okay. during the pandemic, but I, I will confess that I did not, I don't think I learned any new skills, maybe just surviving in a different way. Yeah. Well, yeah. there is that for sure. Now you're one of the people who I know who is actually spending time every week. Uh, we were talking about this when we uh, connected today um, on campus. So you have been going back one day a week, I think, because mm -hmm. is it more than that, Laura? Is it just one no. day? No. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, you've got, you have the advantage of seeing the seasons of McMaster. I mean, we all love 
you know, if you ask people about the campus, most people are like, it's beautiful. And I love it when I'm here and everything like that. So you've been able to take advantage of that, although you're in one particular yes. side of the campus. So have you walked around at all? And what's it like? Tell, tell those of us who don't know. What's it's quiet. Like? It's yeah. quiet. Yeah, it's not quite the same. It's actually very quiet, a little bit dark because there aren't lights on in very many offices. I do work in the health sciences building. So I'm sort of, yeah, at one end and I enter through the hospital. So there are still patients here. There are still, you know, clinicians doing their work. So there's a bit of a critical mass of people, but not a lot. Um, and if you had any which way away from the main hospital, it's, it's very quiet and it's dark. And I think it's sort of at the first couple of times I came, it felt very eerie to me. I've gotten a little bit used to it, but certainly when you see a person now, there's exclamations of joy, <laughs> lots of yelling and air hugs. And, you know, it, it is nice when you run into someone or, or uh -huh. you know, yeah, it is. It is nice. I will say our team. We have a number of people who've been here throughout the pandemic, like like you. We you know we have some critical staff on site, and I think it was important to me to be here once in a while to show them that I appreciate their commitment in being here. And they've done wonderful things, like they've taken the opportunity to paint the halls and change the light bulbs and do some things that we always wanted to do, but it was very difficult to do with everyone here. So they've done a great job, and um, it's my way of recognizing that and being here and saying, hey, everything looks great around here. You guys have done really well. But I am looking forward to seeing more people. I know that not everyone will be back in a permanent way, but certainly I think we will have more, more people around and it will be nice to be running into people for sure. It will. Yeah. I, you know, I know that the students clearly are quite keen about coming back and I think there's lots of other people. So um, when you think about can, one of the things for people who don't spend time on a campus that it's really hard to explain is that beginning of the school year, you know, like what that feels like at the start of the fall semester specifically, because yeah, we do that in January too, but it's quite different. Um, just the outdoor activities and they map the amount of people. Have you ever gotten caught in one of those people rivers where you yeah. end up in and it's like, shoot, I really wanted to go somewhere else, but I guess I'm going with the flow right now. Like, you know, have you had one of those experiences? Oh yeah. It's funny, I think the summer lulls us into a false sense of calm. Um, you, you go out and enjoy the beautiful campus. And then when the students come back, you forget. So when you leave to walk across campus for a meeting, because we're on the far end, so many meetings are way on the other side, you need to give yourself more time because you're used to leaving exactly at this time and making it on time. But when there's a million people, it, you, you know, it takes longer to get there. They bring in energy. Yes. So that is contagious. Yes, for sure. And I find in the fall, especially as they are doing all that welcome week, and there's a lot of like yelling and singing and interesting kind of outfits. And like, you know, it's just this different kind of energy that I think many of us who work at a university, it's one of the reasons why we're here. Yeah. We really are motivated by the students who are here for the students and for the research. It's just an, an extraordinary place. And that's the time of year when you notice it the most, I think. I, um, yeah. yeah, it's festival. Like it, it feels festive, yeah. right? Uh, and yeah. um, to your point, the vibe is really up, and and it's fun, and you kind of laugh, and you also look at people. I don't know about you, but I will. I'll speak out and say, you know, it's gotten to a point over the last ten years because, of course, I've only been at Mac for four, but I've been working in higher education for quite a long time. You start to think, I really can't imagine that anybody ever looked that young when I was that age. Like. <sighs> Honestly, don't you feel like there just becomes this thing where yes. like students look younger every year? No, of course, that's truly me. No, we don't. Like, no. No, no, we don't go in I that know. direction. But anyway, but it is a lot of fun and there is a lot of energy there. So are you taking vacation? And if you are, what are you going to do on your vacation, Laura? What's happening? So yeah, I'm going to take some time off just to be at home with the kids and just do some fun stuff with the kids. I don't know if it's going to be tennis or what it's going to be, but I think just, you know, sleeping in a little bit and having some fun adventures with them is kind of our plan for the summer. We are going to try and do something, hopefully fingers and toes crossed in the winter. That's more travel related, which will be awesome. So we need something to look forward to and hopefully it'll work out. Um, but yeah, I definitely am looking forward to just a break from the screen a little bit yes. and being outside a bit more and um, yeah, just enjoying the kids. I Wonderful. think will be the plan. Yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, well, I wish that for you. And I hope you do, you know, still moments wherever you can. Um, 
and that, yeah, I mean, you get some good time in with your family and away from the screen, because you're right, we spend a lot of time in front of this computer. I never knew I could have so many meetings without going anywhere. Like it's been yeah. quite something, hasn't it? It's a real yeah. uh, shocker for sure. And um, here's a dumb question before we fold, because I'm going to let you go shortly. I know you've got other things to move on to today. So Laura, are you wearing running shoes, sandals, boots, or fancy shoes? What, what's on your feet these days that nobody can see? I'm wearing not sandals, but summer, summer heels. Okay. Okay. That are comfortable and open to the air for right. cool. Yeah. Nothing super fancy. But um, yeah, I like to stand at work when I'm in my office. And so I definitely need comfortable shoes yes. uh, to be here. But yeah, okay. nothing too exciting. I was on Twitter yesterday and there's a lot of discussion about people in their shoes. It's kind of funny. I mean, some people are talking about their pants that they have to wear. It's like, wow, these pants feel you know harder than they used to feel in terms of getting into them. So <laughs> I wear a lot of dresses because it's easy, right? I sit down. Yes. But uh, yeah, but the shoe thing for me is the one that's like, wow, am I going to be able to put my feet back into normal shoes? I don't know. It's going to take a while to get used to normal shoes. I hear you big time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we'll get there. Oh, we're going yeah. right, to be in this together. It'll right. be good. Okay. All right. We're not going to talk about that all the time, but there will be shoe conversations, I promise. So, all right, Laura, it's been a pleasure as always. You just, you knocked me off my, uh, my feet. You're just so amazing. And I really appreciate you. And I think you've been doing a fantastic job. And if somebody hasn't said this to you lately, let me say it. Thank you. Thank Aww, you for thank all you. the good things you do at McMaster for Faculty of Health Sciences, but for all of us, because you're a participant in many leadership discussions and meetings, you bring great thinking. So thank you for everything. Thank you. I really it's appreciate it. It's been so it. fun chatting with you. I've learned a lot from you, Gaylene, and I look forward to continuing thank to you. work with you Me and too. appreciate everything you do as well.